there, this is Julie from Utah Film Center. And as you can see, I've got a lot of film equipment here in front of me, and this is going to be a little bit of an equipment corner. Many people come to us, whether it's teachers or students or families, and say we'd love to start some film projects in our classroom or at home, but we're not quite sure where to get started. Do I have to have all this money and go spend all this equipment? The answer to that is no, you can get started with some very, very simple equipment. And I'm gonna show you some different things that you might wanna consider, where to save money, where to splurge and invest. And so with that, let's go ahead and get started. First, let's talk camera. Many people think I cannot start a film project unless I have a big, expensive camera like this. And although these are nice to have and are definitely an investment if you're gonna be a serious filmmaker, you can get started with really high quality film without even purchasing that equipment. Many of us have tablets and phones in our home. What's great about these is that they have really high quality cameras in addition to some tools like putting a grid on the image that gives you the ability to actually frame some of the images that you are filming. If you're going to film with your phone or a tablet, the most important thing to keep in mind is never film vertically, because if you do, you're gonna have all this blank space on both sides of your film. Instead, you want to film horizontally. Horizontally is the cinematic way that you film, and it puts all of what you're seeing into the full space. There are also some really great tools that you can actually do in your camera settings on your phone or your tablet where you can actually set it up where it shows a grid that overlays the image. This will be able to give you the ability to be able to set your items that you're actually filming in the place that you want and create a little bit more levels of composition. Remember, we have some composition films that are available on our YouTube site as well that you can look at for more information. Now, if you place it like this, then when you mount it onto your tripod, you will be able to have high quality, stable, and cinematic images when you film, even with your phone or your tablet. Now, in order to have a camera, you have to be able to hold it stable as you're actually filming. Now, you might want to do a little bit of a handheld effect where your camera does move a whole lot, and that's okay, but you still want to be able to use what we call tripods and hold it stably on those tripods with what are called mounts. Now, mounts are the things that fortunately are very affordable. Many of these mounts, this one is for a phone, really run you very much, uh, very affordably under about $10. And what you'll see with these is that it's almost impossible to make your phone mount vertically. It just won't do it. So it forces you to actually film horizontally with the mount. Now this mount, what it does is that you would actually place it on a tripod. This tripod that you see here is a table tripod and they are very inexpensive as well. And they have the ability to go very low or very high and you can stabilize them based on the type of thing that you're filming. They just screw on and then you're able to have a really stable filming experience. They also make them available for iPads and for tablets. These particular tablet ones allow you to mount and they're also built in the same way where it forces you to mount the item horizontally rather than vertically. And they can attach onto a tripod as simply as the, as the one I'm showing you here. In addition to that, there are also called handheld. Although these handhelds give you a wonderful, stable environment, you can still also have a little bit of stability in that fun handheld environment. So you can carry it around, you can film like this and move around very seamlessly, but it still creates seamlessness in movement. These are also very inexpensive as well and can run anywhere from $20 or under. If you're going to do a lot of film projects, you're going to be moving to multiple locations and you're going to do things beyond just handheld or something on the tabletop with this tripod, this is really where as a teacher or a student or as a family, you'll want to invest in a tripod. Now, this is the type of equipment that truly you get what you pay for. If you spend, for example, anywhere under $20, usually that material is made with plastic and over time, it might lose its ability to hold its stability when you place a camera on top of it, or it might have some of these different areas that are used to move the camera. They might start to get a little bit loose or won't even work at all. Now, this type of tripod we're seeing here. It's made with very sturdy materials. And we've actually had this at the film center for well over seven years. It's still trucking. 
So it's one of those investment pieces, which will be around $100 to $200, but you'll spend it once and use it for years to come. What's great about many of these is that you can also, they're very, very portable. They'll come with their own travel cases and they have the ability to do really seamless camera movement and can actually do a little bit of the work some of the tabletop and the handheld tripods can do as well. Plus, they also have a really nice level, similar to the ones you've probably seen when you're hanging a picture frame. And those can be incredibly useful to make sure that you have a perfectly stable shot as you're making any kind of filmed media. Now, let's talk sound. Quite often, you can create some wonderful visual images with just a phone or a tablet, but then you go back into the editing room and you realize, goodness, the sound is not very good. I can't hear, or there's all this ex excess sound that's going on in the background, and I can't hear dialogue or other items that are in the soundscape of the film. This is where you'll want to invest in a microphone. Now, you can do this a number of ways. You can see here where I'm speaking, I'm, whole, I'm wearing what's called a lav mic. These mics you can attach to actors and actually attach them to your camera to pick up sound. These are really, really helpful, especially if you're doing the type of filming that's in this video right now, or if you're traveling around in various outdoor locations. Now let's say that you want to not use lav mics, but you're going to just collect the sound in the overall space you can actually get a fairly good quality microphone that can pick up fairly good sound for a pretty affordable cost. This one right here was part of a kit that cost under $20 that we purchased for some small film projects at the Film Center. What's nice about these is they also usually come with some kind of mount that can attach very seamlessly. It's kind of has a universal design, so to speak, and can attach very easily to create a nice, stable environment as you film. And usually they plug in very easily into your actual camera device or with some kind of adapter. And it can actually collect really good sound. So then when you're in editing later on in post-production, you're able to actually hear everything that you wanted to capture with a little bit more precision. Now, if you're going to be doing a lot of filming that has a lot of dialogue, you might want to use one of these type of microphones. This can be great for any kind of post-production corrections you need to make the sound or recording as you go. They usually have USB -E cables at the bottom and they give you the ability to have high quality sound capture. Keep in mind, these are expensive. So this might be an investment piece if you're going to be doing a tremendous amount of media creation that requires a maybe a lot of dialogue. This is more of your mid-priced microphone that you can use for any kind of sound capture. Now this one is one that will last you possibly a little bit longer than this inexpensive one, but it can capture really high quality sound. These are also particularly good if you're going to be filming in a really large space. Now keep in mind, you may want to soften some of the sound so it doesn't have any harsh um, tones. You can have some really nice microphone covers like this that can actually muffle the sound or just diffuse it a little bit. An investment in a really good sound equipment will ensure that not only what you captured visually, but what you captured audibly will be very, very high quality. Let's say that you filmed on the day of shooting and your sound wasn't exactly what you planned. Maybe there was too much traffic that day, maybe it was windy, or there was an airplane that was flying overhead. And now you need to go back in post-production and re-record that sound. Here's a couple of quick tips that you can keep in mind to record quality sound. Tip number one, you can film inside of a closed closet. The muffling of the clothes hanging above you as you are filming your sound can actually make sure that outside environmental noise will not be influenced in your sound that you're recording. Tip number two, you can actually capture sound and record it inside of your car. Now let's keep in mind, we don't want to do this on a too cold or a too hot day because that would be dangerous. But on a nice day where the temperature is moderate, you can go inside of your car with the engine turned off and the windows rolled up and with your microphone record really high quality sound that you can use and add to your film in post-production. Tip number three, use a blanket. Get your recording device, the device that it will be recorded onto, a blanket and your room and close the door. Make sure you don't have the air conditioning running or you have any music playing and get underneath the blanket. 
when you're underneath the blanket with your microphone, you can actually record high quality sound without having any influence of external noises. Now let's talk lighting. Lighting is a very important aspect of your film. Too bright, too dark, then it can actually alter the quality of the captured image that you're doing with your media content. So you may want to invest in or have a couple of little quick tips that are very helpful for lighting. The first thing you can do is invest in some lighting equipment. These can also mount onto your tripods as well and can create some wonderful added light in places that might need a little bit more light on the subject. These come in little cases. They usually also have a battery pack and they can also have filters that you can easily mount onto the top or diffusers. These usually are things that can be very inexpensive and can run anywhere from 30 to $50, including with a battery pack. Remember, these are things that when you're not using them, you always wanna have these charged because if the batteries continuously drain over and over again, you may have to buy new batteries for them. Some other items you may wanna to consider to support you with lighting is to also look at where are you filming. You can have great use of natural light, filming by a window or placing your subject near some source of natural light can also support really high quality lighting design in your, in your film project. Being aware of where your source of light is and filming near that source of natural light can also assist you in high quality filmmaking. Some other materials that you may wanna consider are what we call diffusers or light bouncers. Now you don't need to invest in something as expensive as this. Actually, this one isn't terribly expensive, runs you anywhere from 20 to $40. You could even use a piece of poster board that you collect at the dollar store to be able to place in a certain area to capture some of that light and have it bounce on maybe the face of the subject that you're filming. Now these particular filters can also create a little bit of diffusion. Usually you can unzip them like this, place them near a light subject, and it can also diffuse the light, which you can see a, maybe a little bit of difference on my face right now. These are also ones that you can close up like this and pop them open so you can also make them a little bit more compact. Now keep in mind that these are not required items to have, they're nice to have items to be able to capture really, really well lit and high quality imagery. We hope that this Equipment Corner chat has given you some tips and ideas on where to get started with your film equipment and we'll show you that you don't need a whole lot to have some really good starts in terms of filming high quality content. Thanks again for watching and we hope to see you next time. Bye.